This is Idea Exchange, the future of K-12 education series, brought to you by Macmillan Paston Smith Architecture. So in many ways, schools are some of the most prominent public and community spaces that we have. And that's true whether it's an urban, a suburban, or even a rural environment. School buildings and campuses are used in any number of ways by students, teachers, parents, and community members. The primary purpose, of course, is education, but also community engagement through sports and recreation, clubs and organizations outside of those in school, um, and even schools that can be used as social hubs. Those are all the, the indirect purposes of the school building in the communities that they serve. And it's really important to consider that when thinking about improving an, exist, an existing campus uh, or building a new campus uh, from scratch. Today, we wanted to focus on how to engage the community in that decision-making process for school improvements. That is, considering school engagement and local programs in addition to educational space that a school may provide. One great example of engagement in our most recent work uh, with Aiken County Public Schools uh, in South Carolina is the Wagner Sally High School uh, project, among many that the school district is uh, currently pursuing. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Corey Murphy, uh, the former COO of Aiken County Public Schools uh, and its new and incoming superintendent of schools. Uh, also joining us uh, is a colleague of mine, Laura Slagle. Laura is an experienced project architect for our firm in our Charleston office who has worked with Dr. Murphy and many in, in the Aiken County Public School System on, on the new Wagner Sally High School and other projects uh, over the years. Dr. Murphy, thanks for joining us this, this afternoon on what is day one. <laughs> no problem. I appreciate you guys uh, giving me this opportunity to talk a little bit about our school. What brought you to Aiken County? What path uh, brought you to uh, to this position? Columbia, South Carolina. I was teaching at Richland One. I taught at Eau Claire High School. Uh, when uh, for a few years, I taught at DJJ, and then I became an administrator in Camden, Kershaw County, uh, Camden High School for four years uh, as an assistant principal. Did five years as a principal in Great Falls in Chester County five years as a principal in uh, Buford County at Buford High School, and then three years as a chief of staff up in uh, Virginia and Williamsburg, Virginia, before coming here for the last four years as a chief of operations. And here we are here as a superintendent here in 2024. That's great. So I know you've gotten to know Aiken County and your time there. Could you tell us a little bit about what you feel like makes Aiken County and all of the communities a little different than other places in South Carolina or uh, uh, places that you've worked and traveled before? Well, you, bottom line, you get it all here in Aiken. Um, it's it's a very large county. I uh, mean, the, the blurb I always hear is we're the size of Rhode Island. And so it's a large county to go from one school to the next and uh, from one end to the next it takes over an hour, hour and a half to get there. Um, and you're you're located almost perfectly two hours from anything you want to do. So I could be skiing within two hours. I could be at the beach in two hours. I could be shopping in Atlanta in two hours. So um, you, you kind of nestled right here in the, in the heart of the upstate uh, or the tri-state area. And then you also get um, a, a, a very wide swath of communities. So we have the rural, we have the urban, we have the suburban. We've got um, folks living in poverty here in this community, and we've got extremely wealthy folks in this community. So um, you just get a lot uh, in one small area. So I think that everyone that comes into the community can find an area that 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 suits their needs and gives them what they're looking for. With, with, with all of that diversity in the smaller communities or the urban and suburban and rural communities that you have, I, I'm, I'm sure uh, communication is probably paramount uh, when it comes to uh, school district and any kind of changes that, that may happen uh, over time. Um, what's, your, what's your experience been with kind of the community involvement side of, of planning schools within that diverse community or, or a collection of communities that, that Aiken County has? Well, uh, a little bit of background. Uh, Aiken County schools uh, in, in general um, are getting very old. And so when we talk about replacing schools, 
community members are bringing up, you know, they're, they're bringing baggage that could be from, I mean, we're at the Sally alone, 1939. Um, and so when they're looking at addressing things or needs in that community, they're talking about generations of need. And so we have to be very cognizant of that. So when we're talking to the community, we need to understand that they're just not trying to fix something that happened last week, last month, last year. They're talking about, you know, issues that have been prevalent through the 60s, 70s, 80s. And so they are wanting to get everything addressed in these one uh, one or two facilities. And so we've got to honor that and also try to honor our budget. And so we got to say, all right, now I know I want to fix as much as I can, but we have to also stay within what's reasonable. Sure. So when you're just when you're starting to have those conversations with with the community, is there is there a structure? Is there a pattern that you use to kind of pull that together? Could you describe a little bit of that? Well, uh, typically what we've been doing is intercessions, uh, town halls. Uh, first of all, talking about what it is that we're trying to do, or what we would like to do. And then we take a lot of feedback from the community. The original plan was, of course, to have the, the high school rebuilt on the current high school campus. But um, that just proved very problematic and in, in what we were trying to do. It also would have caused us to have a multi-step transition. It would take years and that costs even more money. So we'd end up with less school um, over a long period of time than just finding a new site. And then the community was really uh, insistent upon paying homage to some of the, 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 the styling cues as well as some of the local heroes in that area in our new school. So we had to incorporate that into the uh, design and, and kind of into the ethos of what we were doing out there as well. That That is truly amazing because I think what what folks um, that, that might listen would, would hear would, would be, there's a lot of things on the table going on at, when you're talking about school design or, or planning or improvements in the future. And so getting everybody in the same room probably has um, as a starting point, probably has some real benefit to you as you move down the the road. Could you kind of describe maybe some of that thought process or stories coming out of those sessions? It was um it was interesting because again uh, the school was built in thirty nine and I mean you have wooden lockers you you walking down the halls on a crawl space and so the floor gives and uh, so. Uh, people have fond memories, you know, sometimes your memory, you get rid of uh, the things that weren't so great and you just remember the good times. And so we had a lot of historians in there. And, and I remember making a line that, you know, I'm, I'm here to build a school, not a museum. And, and, and I just wanted to make sure they understood that we're trying to build educational spaces. Um, we, we can nod our hat or, 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 you know, we need to make sure we, we at least respect the heritage and the culture but at the same time, you also want to create a, a first class educational space and get the most you can for your money. So that was just, that was that was kind of like a, a, a tiptoe through the park, if you would, because I know a lot of times they like every piece of that school was historic. And so the community was like, you can't get rid of this. You can't get rid of that. I remember we had discussions about the auditorium. They wanted us to use the original chairs from the auditorium. To, and building a new auditorium, those chairs are are, are very old. I mean, uh, maybe one, you know, but not <laughs> not three hundred chairs or seats from an old auditorium. So you just had a lot of folks in the community that that, that were um wanting to see a new old building. But then when we start getting to talking to the kids, the kids wanted state of the art. The kids wanted forward thinking, progressive thinking. So we had to. You know, make sure we honored one by also respecting the needs and the primary purpose. So it, it was just one of those things where you you, you got to find that balance. Gotcha. And Laura, maybe that's a good uh, place for for you to kind of uh, fill in a little bit and, and maybe talk with Dr. Murphy about the project specifically specifically because uh, you know you've got that great interaction of of the community. Um, as you're starting that process, and and then comes the reality, the architecture. What what are the systems? What are the programs? All the things um, kind of back behind that make it work uh, as well. Yeah, you know, we had the privilege of facilitating a community workshop uh, with representation from the towns of Wagner and Sally. This was back in 2022 during the design phase. 
And really, the district did a fantastic job of bringing together a diverse cross section of different generations and viewpoints. You know, we had uh, previous students and families, we had administrators and teachers, even some of those community heroes that Dr. Murphy mentioned. Um, they had wonderful stories to tell. You're right that there's a very um, deep connection rooted in the history and kind of the culture of the town to this school. And, you know, their, their feedback and their dreams for the new school, it, it did vary a little bit. But uh, the one thing we heard was a shared passion for student opportunity. That was the tangible takeaway, um, no matter the age or the representation. Um, when, when we left that meeting, we kind of adopted a community mantra um, for the students, which was dream big and do big. And this was really the hope, whether these students were pursuing um, one of the CTE programs or athletics, it was really to give them a well-rounded education and a facility um, that could meet those needs. So, so Dr. Murphy, I was curious, did, did this early community involvement affect the overall perception of the new project, the new school? Yes, yeah, it's, it's great to use the word opportunity because that's exactly what this school represents. And, you know, originally our budget was a lot more modest. We were just looking at maybe a refurb or, re, uh, or just maybe a, a slight addition, but we were able to get authorization to use some of those ESSER funds to actually turn into an entire project. And so uh, the school was able to uh, kind of realize some of those loftier goals that they wanted to have for their community because they are so far out. So they have a harder time accessing career and technical education programs. And sometimes with the, the ROTC athletic programs, they kind of take a back seat because it's, it's harder to service 200 kids when, you know, 30 miles down the road, you've got 1,400 kids. And so um, we were able to, to find some economies out there and, and utilize that uh, um, federal dollars in order to create this, this wonderful space. And the school in and of itself is magnificent as, as it comes together. I mean, the scope of it all, all once you get the brick and mortar on the ground is, is impressive. Well, you mentioned uh, funding a little bit too. I always, I always find that the, the kind of uh, stable course we always have to talk about when it comes to project planning uh, and and design and of course uh, improvement. So I, I I I'm I'm guessing what you you mentioned ESSER funds being part of the the overall scope of the funding uh, mechanism uh, here. Is that did that have the impact of creating a new campus or was that just just accelerated your your vision forward? How did that how did that funding uh, work? Yeah, originally we were going to be using 8% funds and we were going to have to piecemeal this project together, um, kind of at, at like eight to $10 million chunks. And it was going to take several years in order to get a decent campus together. So um, uh, my, my predecessor, Mr. Lawrence, had to loft the idea of, hey, let's see, can we use some of these federal dollars? And we had to go to the state, get approval, and we had to do some cost benefit analyses with the old building and, and why this qualified as an ESSER project. And we had some very serious concerns with air quality and many parts of the building, mold in many parts of the building. And, and, and we basically discovered that it would be more cost effective to build new than to try to, to rehab uh, some of these older areas of the school. And then think about the final product as well. So um, it was just a fantastic opportunity. And, and with the like I said, the money, which is unprecedented from an unprecedented thing, uh, COVID, uh, pandemic, then we ended up just having all these things converge at the same time where the school was ending. I mean, it, it had already well exceeded useful life. Um, it's a beautiful building from the outside, but when it comes to actual the functionality of the building, it just wasn't there. One of the things that I thought was most exciting, Dr. Murphy, about moving from the existing building to a new facility is that we are able to make it fully accessible and welcome students uh, back to the school, the building, and they no longer need to be virtual anymore. Can you talk a little bit about the opportunities that are available to all of your students now? Oh, wow. Well, the biggest thing we we, we like about this building here is the fact that we have the, the learning spaces that are designed for learning. And then you also have cake spaces like we have an ag program now that is it's going gangbusters, and this is their first time being away from their their science classroom, which is the actual the the the, the wooded area behind the school. So we're gonna we procured another piece of land for them to do a lot of their ag work on out there, uh, barbering, cosmetology, uh, ROTC, welding, which is very huge. Um, all these programs are being brought 
well, they're being re refurbished and brought out to the new school because at some point we're getting down to the point where it was just they're, they're, the numbers were dwindling and it was harder to service these programs. But now new facility, new technology, new equipment, and it's just like a shot in the arm for the kids. And so now they're coming up, they're getting more excited about going to these career paths. And, and so just having that experiential learning, having that beautiful campus to learn on, I think that that's going to be a, a, a boom for that community, both Wagner and South. I think that's great to talk about opportunity for for sure. I mean, it's really it's really uh, uh, great programs uh, give that opportunity. It sounds like you guys are, are really inspiring that next generation um, in in that area, one one thing that that I also remember, I, I wonder if you might speak to is kind of the community service um, side of it too. I think there's some community service inside of this uh, this planned building as well. Yes, Mr. Neelams, their current principal, uh, was very adamant about, hey, this is not just a school when it comes to a small town. This is the community center, and so we need to also think about having spaces here for community health care. So. Um, we, we made sure we incorporated an area in there where we could bring in service providers and they could also utilize the space with a separate entrance and, and way in and out. So now we have a, a, a very nice facility to help bring uh, services that were no or were previously having a hard time coming out to the Wagner Valley area. Now they have a, a nice space to do it. So we've got entered into a, an initial partnership and we look forward to expanding that with other providers in the future as well. Oh, that's great. That, that really does make it a true community school uh, with with things going on on the uh, through in the campus throughout the day uh, for for not only the students, but for the community members um, overall. Laura, I assume uh, you are watching this uh, be delivered, come up out of the ground. What's next for um, for the, the project overall from a construction standpoint? Sure. So, um, I, you know, I want to mention we broke ground in the fall of 2022. And I have to say in my 20 years, I have never seen a better attended and more inspiring event for groundbreaking. The community was out in full force. They were energetic, they were optimistic, and um, the support was really palpable. So um, it's been a great project to watch progress. Uh, it's had a, a very smooth construction process thus far. Um, you know, fast forward two years, we anticipate the construction being complete this fall or winter. So, so we're getting closer, which is really exciting. And uh, Dr. Murphy, is I'm just curious to hear, what, what are you most excited about? What is the community most excited about as you see this building coming to life? Uh, timelines, um, because the old building is starting to give up the ghost a little bit. I just lost a, uh, an air conditioning unit, and I think the uh, the expected price to get it fixed would be $300,000. So I'm like, okay, let's just hold on for a couple more weeks to see if we get to the new building. So um, I just, you know, there we're not like it was last year. We opened a middle school up that was a, a brand new middle school, and we had four campuses coming together to create this middle school. And we had to open it up the first day of school that would have been turmoil. So here we have a very viable school that, that the kids can stay at in the fall as long as some of the other systems hold out long enough. So it, it relieves a little bit of the pressure, but from a from an educator, educator standpoint, I'm worried about, you know, end of life for some of these systems here. I don't want the kids going to school in a less ideal situation. And then we also don't want to pour money into a facility that we're eventually going to be walking away from. So we've got to just kind of balance that line here. I think we're meeting next week to, to look at some of the furniture there. Um, we I looked at the initial package. Of course, my eyes doubled in size and I was like, well, OK, wait a minute now. Uh, it, and it's easy to lose track of the fact that, I mean, at, at Wagner Salad right now, the current population is around 230 kids. It's a very small school. And so we want to make sure that the scope and the way we're outfitting the school is designed for, you know, potential growth, but not exponential growth. And so I don't need the same package I would normally put in a 700 seat school. So we're going to try to fine tune that over the next few uh, days and then we have to start looking down the line to the next package. You know, we have an athletics package that we haven't addressed. We also owe the town a park. Um, we, we, we're we building the school on the site of a former park. And so what we said was, hey, we'll rebuild your park on our current school site. We'll just swap. And so we have to also start looking at that design as well. So this project, we figure it will, will be completed totally in the next two to three years. But we, we're looking forward to opening the school up here in the 
how you say it, the, the fall winter. Don't want to put any final line on it than that. Just say the fall winter. Well, I know everybody is getting really excited um, in that community for for this school, uh, for, for sure. Thanks for sharing uh, a little bit more uh, about stakeholder engagement when it comes to kind of creating those spaces, because I think that really makes the, the project uh, well-rounded. It makes it specific uh, to the areas that it served, given that Given that uh, you, you you certainly want the same educational spaces uh, and programs uh, as much as possible in all of your schools, so thank you for sharing a lot of that um, a lot of that setup because I think it makes a difference to some of our listeners who might be thinking about doing uh, some improvements or some new schools in, in some of their communities uh, as well. Anything else that you'd like to share uh, about Aiken uh, schools uh, or or moving forward? Uh, we're just excited. I mean, right now we're we're about to go um, into the voters for another readoption of the penny sales tax here. So looking forward to um, finalizing those projected proposed pro projects at the next board meeting. I think we're hoping to bring in about two hundred eighty five million dollars. Again, we're at forty two, forty three buildings. Uh, if you ask how many schools, I'll say forty four, but it's it's more than one school per building. Um, but many of them have not been addressed. Uh, many of them have reached their 50 year useful uh, mark. And so we got to determine how, we can't rebuild 40 schools at one time. It's just not possible. And so we have to start plant, projecting out uh, the community's growing and it's shifting as well. So we know that we got a lot more growth in the North Augusta Midland Valley area than we do in the Wagner Salad Rich Spring area. So we got to make sure that we're projecting out to we'll always have those faces because we want to welcome any families that want to relocate here. It's just so much going on in Aiken County right now that uh, everyone is excited. And I do want to give my hats off to you all, especially Laura. Uh, these these the, 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 the times we work together have been turnkey and have been very pleasant experiences. Uh, I've worked with a lot of other firms as well. It's just you all make it uh, a very pleasant process and you make it very easy to, to, to get through these things. And I come in on time and under budget, which makes me look even better. So I, I, I'll take it. Thank you all. Now, I, I think, thank you, Dr. Murphy. We really have appreciated the relationship over the, the decades at this point, um, uh, working with, with the schools and wish you best of luck on, on certainly your next round, your next uh, improvement uh, to the schools in the area. So thanks for your time this afternoon. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. Really appreciate your time and your kind words. Too easy. Thank you. Well, Laura, that was a great interview with Dr. Murphy. I'm I'm really excited about this this project really coming into its own uh, in the coming months. What was your biggest takeaway uh, from from working with Aiken County Public Schools and and talking about this project as it's kind of wrapping up? They were a fantastic county to work with, and really the community was so passionate that they made it easy for us as designers to get excited and want to deliver a fantastic project for them. Um, you know, the the thing that stands out to me is the very first day we sat there with the principal and some of the administration is they talked about um, the school being the community hub and taking care of the entire student, looking at um, what a social, emotional, and physical education looks like. So I'm just really excited that the district is investing um, both in the facility, in those environmental spaces, but also in their CTE programs and in that mobile health clinic that Dr. Murphy spoke to. They are really making a commitment to the students and the community to bring up the entire student. And I just think that only means great things for the future of education in Aiken. Yeah, I think one of my biggest takeaways was was the investment that the school district was willing to to make in such a small uh, area uh, of of the county. You know, one one thing that sometimes happens is that you try to group um, smaller schools together, consolidate those into uh, a larger school. And and here for Aiken County, county Public Schools for this area, for that Wagner Sarah, Sally area, um, the district chose chose to really uh, double down on on community um, there. So that's really neat to see um, because, as Dr. Murf Murphy said, opportunity was really the key to the success, um, not only of this of his biggest schools, but here specifically for this area, for that school, um, for that school specifically, too.
Yeah, absolutely. I had students tell me that they rode the bus an hour each way to the Career and Technology Center to study some of these programs that will now be in the new school. And so how exciting that these students just got two more hours back in their day to further their education. And, um, you know, they're going to take those careers and run with them and do great things in the community. Such an exciting part of of what we do day in and day out as as architects and designers to really see not only the space come alive, but the programs that matter uh, being delivered to the to the students there. So this is this is another great project and really appreciate your work with it. Thanks for tuning in to Idea Exchange, the future of K-12 education series. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss our next episode.